Think drug dealer, and you probably think of a shady character. Not this guy. But as more and more people buy drugs online... The drugs people are most likely to buy on the dark net are cannabis, MGMA, LSD, cocaine, and novel drugs. Your local postie is, without knowing, becoming a vital link in the drug dealing chain. For most people browsing the internet, they'll never leave what could be termed the surface web. But there's a much murkier part of the internet, a few clicks of the mouse away. Under the surface, there are millions and millions of files full of financial data, photos and other material that isn't publicly accessible. Keep going and you arrive in the dark web. For a growing number of drug users, it's the easiest and most reliable place to get hold of supplies. I bought marijuana, ecstasy, 2CB, 2CI, benzos, cocaine, there's a couple of others, AM22, psychedelic stimulants, 25I. The recent Global Drug Survey found that in the past year, one in five people who took part had used drugs bought online. Steve's one of them. We're waiting for a package of an ounce of MDMA to be delivered. See the postman drive down, we get very excited, and then she gives me the package, I sign for it. Happy doodah. So, uh, yeah, we opened up this package. Inside there was an ounce of MDMA. Me and my friend at the time found it incredibly funny. She gave us the post and just had no idea. She handed it over us and said, thank you very much. And I looked at her and I said, thank you very much. And she walked off completely unaware of what had just happened. She, she was a part of a drugs trade. So just how easy is it to get hold of drugs in this way? If you do an investigation on the dark web, you need to see it firsthand. So I've come to meet Chris. He was introduced to me as the person you need to meet if you want to know what's going on on this murky part of the internet. Hello. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Hi. Take a seat. Before meeting Chris, I bought some Bitcoin, the currency used on the dark web. If we go onto this section here, which yep. says drugs, yep. we click on it, and it looks like eBay for yep. drugs. I and mean, that is absolutely. That's a crass analogy, but that's what it, we've got here. It is. It? it is. So you, you have to have mm. a certain amount of mm. understanding yes. to be able to operate on here, yep. buy drugs on here, and generally kind yep. of like exist. There, there is a barrier to entry. It's yeah. not uh, mainstream yet. But um, I Do can... you think that's changing? It is changing. I compare it to um, piracy. A lot of people won't download stuff, but they get their mates to do it, or get their mates to teach them how to do it, and they do it themselves. You think of like the dark web, dark web markets, and think, oh, this is going to be seedy and crazy place, yep. and it's all really dodgy. This looks like a normal website. This yep. looks like a normal purchasing website, terms mm -hmm. and conditions. Yep. I mean, that's not what you expect to see with a drug dealer. Um, well, offline, certainly not, but online, it's become the norm. What's the likelihood I'm going to get them? Through. If I'm no. going to order three things today, yeah. I would say 98% that you'll get all three. Really? Yep. Do you think that's the reason why this is a, a growing trend amongst drug users? Absolutely. It gives you the user experience of eBay and Amazon and applies it to drugs and makes it safe. It's a booming market as a result. To test the system, I ordered hash, ecstasy, and synthetic cannabis. So we're back in the office and it's literally taken us a couple of hours to get back here and log back in and we've already got two messages. So just wait. The one thing with the dark web is it is quite slow so it takes quite a long time to load it through. So we've got one here. Yep, confirmation on two of our orders. The seller has sent your order. So we've got two of the three already en route and that's about an hour, hour and a half after we ordered them. It looks so straightforward and normal. It's easy to forget this is illegal. And as the dark web becomes a more popular place to buy drugs, Inevitably, more and more illegal substances are being carried in the post. But is this something your average postie is even aware of? And I wondered if you'd seen anything. No. No, OK, no worries. So I've spent a couple of hours just walking around this area, trying to get postal workers to stop and have a chat with us. I wonder if you ever see anything getting posted out in that. I haven't met them. Many did, but didn't want to go on camera. I think they're quite worried about losing their jobs, potentially, if they speak out. But we have got some comments that they gave us which I noted down here and they're quite happy for me to read them out but just not go on camera so we've got one guy here's been working over there for 26 years never seen a drugs dog in that time another guy 14 years as a postman similar time never seen a drugs dog parcels get scanned yes I admit that but how am I meant to know what's in a parcel once it's in my bag I just deliver them and another guy here says yep yeah, we definitely suspect the post 
and it's that weed issue again. We can smell the weed, but once it's in my mailbag, we just have to deliver it. We saw a similar response when we asked the question on a forum used by postal workers. One said they'd handled a couple this year that had a suspicious odour. Another said a parcel was beginning to stink out the office, so it was taken to the police station. And one posted, every now and then we get a special delivery for one of the businesses, and that's full of weed, and it stinks out the lockers. Eventually, we did manage to find one postman who would talk to us, but only if he could remain anonymous. Hi, nice yeah. to meet you. How are you doing? He's come across drugs in his mile bag. One parcel that has had drugs in it. What was in there, as far as you know? The smell of cannabis. So you smell it, and then what? Yeah. Um, you tell the managers, and all they say is, you need to deliver it. If you see the person it's being delivered to, uh, just tell them to be more careful. Really? The Royal Mail told us it doesn't knowingly carry any illegal items in its network and says it works closely with the police and other authorities to prevent such activities from happening. All right, we're going the right way, Matt. A few days on since we put our orders in on the dark web and it's time to see if they've turned up. Right, is everyone ready? We got them delivered to a PO box and asked Jimmy from the office to give us a lift down to pick them up. All right, let's see in a sec. Hi there. Look at my post box. Can't hear him. So this is the post office collection point where Jim's had the drugs delivered. And the reason I've got headphones on while I'm at the wheel is we're just listening in while he's in the queue. I just had a couple of texts from Jim. He says it's taking ages, slightly paranoid, something's amiss. So I've asked him why. And he says, not sure, just the woman looked at a pile, then went off and she hasn't come back yet. Cheers now. Thank you. All right, he's coming. <laughs> gone ages. Oh, gone ages, right. We had three orders that we put in, and all, well, I'm assuming all three of these are the three orders. So what is supposed to be in there? There's supposed to be one ecstasy tablet, which is a, a blue Tesla pill. There's going to be a small amount of uh, hash cannabis, and there's also going to be some spice Really, if that came through your mail or if you're a postman, you wouldn't know any different. I mean, that just looks like... Does it feel, can you feel anything in there? Yeah, there's definitely stuff in there, that, but it's clearly been very well wrapped up. Um, it's hard, I mean, it's got bubble wrap all around them, but actually, really, it could be anything in there. I mean, it just, they're just anonymous looking packages. So we've got three packages, but we don't know what's in them. Cheers to the lift, I'll see you in a bit. Anyway, so we're going to take them to a government approved testing lab. In here we've got three samples we've bought online. So we should open them all up, see if we've got what we actually ordered. A packet of sweets. There it is. Among the sweets, there's something wrapped up. Yeah, yeah that one looks like the uh, ecstasy tablet we ordered. That's, that's yeah, it's the, the same brand and everything we thought it was. Yeah. It was Tesla, blue one. Yeah. That looks very much like it was on the picture on, on the dark web when we bought it. This, we believe, is a blue ecstasy tablet, but the only way to know properly is to test it. So what we'll do is I'm gonna hand this to Anka, and first she's just gonna do some measurements with it, and then we'll take it into the lab and analyze it. Grand. A small bit of the pill is crushed up, dissolved, and run through a machine that compares it to known drug samples. And what you're looking for here is, you know where these spikes normally are on the graph, and then you can compare that with your database, is that yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So I've got the retention time. Okay. And then it says that your tablet contains uh, MDMA, ecstasy, which is what we thought obvious. it was. Yeah, exactly. Opening the other two packets, the hash has come in a foil wrap disguised as tea, and the spice is just loose in an envelope inside the outer jiffy bag. These types of envelopes will be going through the post in the millions and not necessarily with this type of stuff in it, you know, quite legitimate post in it. And if you look at this closely, you'd instantly see that it had been tampered with and there was something else in it. That, no effort whatsoever. This will, in theory, avoid smell to a degree. These got through because, as I said, there's millions of these that go through. And if the post office opened every package that came through it, we would get our post through a month, two months, three months after somebody posted it to us. So they can't. And, but it's interesting because to me, you might as well have made no effort to, to do what these people have done 
because it's, if someone was looking, opening these and looking for contraband, they'd have spotted all of these very quickly. Our three packages all arrived as described, but just how popular is this route becoming? Hi there. Oh, yeah. See, oh, it's very good. Dr. Adam Winstock runs the Global Drug Survey, where users go annually to record their drug use. The drugs people are most likely to buy on the dark net are cannabis, MGMA, LSD, cocaine, and novel drugs. And in terms of the number of people buying, we've certainly seen a year-on-year -year increase over the last three years, um, from about 12% of people who reported either having bought drugs on the dark net themselves or having had drugs bought for them to almost 18% last year. And the current global drug survey, I suspect, is going to show a further increase. And we're seeing that trend pretty much globally. So on Amazon, you get that idea of people, basically, you buy this, you might like this. Does that happen a lot on the dark web? Absolutely. But about a third of people said they broaden their drug using repertoire. It's like, we noticed that you like LSD and magic mushrooms. Perhaps you'd be interested in 2CB or DMT. I think there is absolutely that effect but also people who are on the dark net are probably quite open to looking around on what else is on offer. What does the Global Drug Survey tell us about habits across the world on the dark web? So people's interest in the dark net often reflects sort of drug policies that um, we see within a country. I mean, countries like New Zealand, where it's very difficult to get illicit drugs into the country because of their fantastic biological walls that sniffer dogs and searching and everything else, very few people use the dark net I think because of very high levels of cooperation between the police and the postal services. So there are anomalies, but generally most people reckon it's safer buying drugs online and that's where they score them from. So what is New Zealand doing right? Back in the Newsbeat office, we've arranged a chat with Jamie Bamford. He's in charge of investigations and intelligence for New Zealand's customs. Jamie, everyone keeps telling us New Zealand's leading the way keeping dark web drugs off the street. What's your secret over there? Um, well, that's obviously very nice to hear, but... Um the way we have sort of approached this problem is um, we have taken an intelligence-led approach to it, so um, take uh, quite a keen interest, obviously, in the dark net. Do you think more than ever New Zealanders are buying their drugs online? We've had an increase uh, in sort of small seizures at our mail centre. Um, we've tripled over a two-year period. Um, can't put that down entirely to the dark net, but we think that's a significant uh, contributor. Is it just the usual stuff that you're doing over there, things like scanners and sniffer dogs? Yeah, they're hugely effective uh, in the mail centre setting. So um, they, they lead to a lot of success, but um, actually, you know, a lot of intelligence puts the dogs in the right place. Uh, and in fact, there's been a big push within New Zealand to sort of join up all of, all of the agencies and have them working and collaborating together uh, in order to get that success. But yeah, they're a key, key tool for us. This part of London used to be home to lots of shops where you could buy legal highs or new psychoactive substances. The government say that its new law to tackle this has meant that the shops have all closed down. But we managed to get these drugs on the dark web, getting around these new rules. We asked the government to come on and speak to us about this, but they declined. They say they're spending £1.9 billion over the next five years on cyber security. Back in the newsroom, we've asked Yvette Cooper to come and watch our film. Just show this, if you want to start, stop at any point, just say as well. She chairs the Home Affairs Select Committee, which monitors the government on issues including drugs and crime. So, what's your reaction to the piece? I think this is serious and it's a growing problem for to have criminal gangs using new technology. And the question is, are the police or the authorities or the government able to keep up? We heard in the piece from one of the senior officers at New Zealand's customs there, he says it's all about collaboration. We have not managed to get anyone to even come down and talk to us from the government on this, or the Postal Service. Surely that's where collaboration starts, listening to the problem, isn't it? Yeah, collaboration, changes in technology, you know, changes in capacity, and also in training and skills as well. How do you make sure that the people who've got to do these jobs are able to keep up and, and get the best training as well. So all of those things need to be answered. One of the things that keeps coming up in the piece there is postal workers saying they've never seen a sniffer dog. And yet the guy from New Zealand Customs says, oh, we've got sniffer dogs targeting certain bits of mail. Is it not madness that we're not seeing more sniffer dogs on our mail in this country? 
Well, I'm surprised that neither the government nor uh, you know the police uh, nor the postal services were prepared to give you an answer on that because I think we need to know that there's a, a proper approach to enforcement taking place. But I do also think that the authorities need to be providing some answers to say what they are doing to take on these changing forms of dangerous crimes.